The last factoring we need to look at here is something called perfect square trinomials and difference of squares. Now referring you back to the handout that again is on my wiki site, you can download it and print it out for your review. Um, you did both of these in grade 10. So let's take a look at the perfect square trinomials first. These are trinomials whose first and last terms are perfect squares and whose second term, that's a term in the middle, is the square root of each of these two terms times two. So that sounds all pretty complicated until you just take a look at it here. So here's an example here. Another way sometimes, sometimes you can tell it's a perfect square trinomial is that the teacher will ask you to factor something that's a really large number like this times this is what, what, 144. Well, maybe you didn't know that. But you would look to see, first of all, if this number, you can take the square root of this number. And you can. So I did that over here. It's 4x. Can you take the square root of the last number? And is it positive? It has to be positive. Because remember, a perfect square trinomial means something squared. So if you're squaring the last term, it has to be positive. So that's very important that you look for a plus sign here. So square root of this is 4x, square root of this is 3, and these two numbers multiplied together times 2 give me this number here. So it doesn't matter so much what the sign is here. You're not worried about that because you just put in the negative to make this term negative in the end. So it says the sign in front of the last term, 9, must be positive, but the sign in front of the x term can be either positive or negative simple as that. So here's another example where I did it um, with a positive one, but note this one is positive. These are perfect squares, so I can take the square root of that as 2x, square root of 81 is 9, and 2 times 9 is 18, times 2 is 36. So I just put the two numbers here, 2x, square root of this one, and this sign in the middle. So there's your perfect square trinomials. The other type that you did in grade 10 was a difference of squares. Just what it says, two perfect squares separated by a minus sign. That's why they call it a difference of squares. There's no such thing as a sum, sum of squares. There is a sum of cubes, but you won't do that till grade 12. So here's my difference of squares here. Square root of 81x squared is 9x, square root of 4 is 2. And all you have to do is add and subtract these two terms. Just like that. So easy. It's the easiest one. Difference of squares. Here's another one here. 121x squared. So square root of that is 11x. Square root of this is 12. I put them in two sets of brackets. Adding one. Subtracting one. Okay. So that's pretty easy. Now let's look at some that might cause you a little more trouble. And one from your textbook homework assignment that is a little different. So sometimes the difference of squares is in disguise. In this case, there's a common factor that needs to be removed first. So 3x cubed minus 48x, what can I take out of both of these terms? Remember, and most importantly, that you always have to look for a common factor. In this case, it's 3x. I divide by 3x, I'm left with x squared minus 16. And now you should realize that these terms here are perfect squares. So all I have to do is take the square root of each one. Square root of x squared is x. So I'm going to add and subtract the square root of the last term, which is 4. Plus 4 minus 4. There you go. Here's another one that is a little bit trickier because this thing is squared. So I have something squared minus something else squared. So just think of this again like, like a block. So I take the square root of this. I'm going to write it right over top this time. The square root of 16 is 4. And the square root of x minus 3 squared is x minus 3. I'm going to leave it in brackets and you'll see why in a second. Okay, so when I do the process here to factor it, I have 4. I'm going to put a big bracket here. So I have 4 plus this one, x minus 3. And I have 4 minus x minus 3. 
Now that's the start of it. You do need to expand the bracket and simplify this first. So this is nice because it's plus. So plus I just need to remove these signs. So I have 4 plus x minus 3. So that will leave me with x plus 1. x, 4 minus 3 is 1. And this bracket here, I have to be careful because it's 4 minus x minus minus 3. So that's 4 plus 3 is 7 and a minus x. So I have minus an x plus 7. Now if you want to get really fancy, you could also take that negative sign out, out front here, divide this by negative, and it makes it just a little bit neater. Okay, so let's look at number three here. Here's another question. You're asked to factor it. Oh, and again, if you were saying, oh, this is a complex trinomial, I do 49 times 4, and then you say, well, wait a minute. Can I take the square root of this number? The square root of 49x squared is 7x. The square root of 4 is 2, and 2 times 7x is 14x is times 2, because remember when we did squaring binomials, this is twice the product. So I want this times this times 2, and it is. So that makes this very easy. It's just 7x. This sign comes down, so plus 2 squared. So if you expanded this, squared is this number. Twice the product gives me this, and squared gives me the 4. This last one here is one that um, you don't see too often, but teacher might want to put this on a test just because it's a little tricky to see what kind of level you're at. This would be like a level four factoring question. What you need to recognize here is that this, these three terms, so this is like factor by grouping, only I'm not going to do two and two. It's not going to get me anywhere if I do two by two because I have y's here. So this part here, these first three terms are a perfect square trinomial. And then the minus sign in front of this might give you a little clue that this is also a difference of squares that needs to be factored as a perfect square trinomial first. So if I factor this, square root of x squared is x, square root of 4 is 2, and 2 times x times 2 is this, and this is a plus sign. All those things are important. So that just means that this would factor to x plus 2 squared, and then minus 36y squared. And now we're back to kind of like this one, only it's written the other way around. So I have a difference of squares now here, right? It's a difference of squares. So I can take the square root of the first, that's x plus 2, so one of them, and I add the square root of this one, 6y, and I write it out again, x plus 2, and I minus 6y. Okay, so there's really, I could remove these brackets if I wanted just to make this a little, a little neater. I might write x plus 2 plus 6y times x plus 2 minus 6y. There's nothing I can combine. They're all different terms. Okay, so the last one is one from your textbook's homework assignment. Um, you may have gotten this in, in part for your, your homework. It's on page 102, number 4F, and it looks like this. And the question says to factor it. So you'd probably look at that and say, well, I haven't a clue how to factor this. I haven't a clue. There's nothing common. Uh, there's all kinds of mess here. And what you really need to do first is to expand. So if your teacher is nice, he or she would say expand and then factor. So I have to expand this so I can see something that could possibly be factored. So I do 4t times each of these, a little rainbow going on here. So that's 4t cubed plus 16t squared plus 8t. Now be careful with this. There's a minus sign here. Red alert, red alert. Make sure you're multiplying and changing the signs as you go along. So that's going to be minus 6t cubed plus 6t squared. 
and negative 2 times 17 is minus 34t. Okay, so still we don't have too much uh, happening here. It doesn't look factorable yet, but I'm going to find all of the terms that I can combine. So I have t cubes, I have t squareds, and I have t's here. So sometimes good idea to write that. It helps you out. 4t cubed minus 6t is minus 2t cubed. My squares, I have 22 t squareds. And 8 minus 34 is minus 26 t. And now I can think about factoring this. So it's kind of a multi-step question here, isn't it? So I'm going to factor out, everyone has a t, so I'm going to take a t and I'm going to take a negative 2t out of each of these terms. So minus 2t. And what am I left with? Divide this, minus 2 is gone, t cubed divided by t is t squared. 22 divided by minus 2 is minus 11. t squared divided by t is t. And minus 26 divided by minus 2 is plus 13. And the t's are gone. t divided by t is a 1. So I'm down to this now. I'm going to say, what can I do about... Let's see, did I make a little mistake here? 34, 18 minus 34 is minus 26, 20, that's 16, I know I've made a mistake here, 16 t squared, and this is, oh that should have been minus 12, plus 12, oops, sorry guys, we make mistakes too, right, I knew this was supposed to be factorable, so that gives me 12 and 16 is 28 t squareds. And when I divide it by minus 2, that would give me minus 14. There we go. Okay, so now I'm looking for a product. This is a simple trinomial, right? So I'm looking for a product of 13 and a sum of minus 14. So two numbers that multiply to 13, the same two numbers add to negative 14. So one apart, this has to be positive, so it's minus 13 and minus 1. Multiply, two negatives make it positive, and when I add them, I get minus 14. It's a simple trinomial, so all I have to do is put a t here, subtract 13, and then another t and a minus 1. And there you go. Okay, so that's the end of the review of factoring, and now we'll get into the hard stuff when you're needing to uh, simplify some rational expressions using your factoring skills. If you have any comments, please add them below. It would also be really nice if you would subscribe to let me know that uh, you're interested in me making any further videos for you. Work hard, do your homework.